Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to the Engine 25 uh, YouTube channel. Uh, also, uh, one thing I didn't mention in the last episode is I'm also on Spotify now, so you can search for Engine 25 reviews and it should come up there. Uh, I'll put the link in the in the show notes. Uh, anyway, if you uh, if you like what you see or what if you like what we talk about, please hit that subscribe button. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Suicide Squad with a uh, an old filmmaking buddy of mine. So let's. Uh, Let's get over to it. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, man? I'm doing well. This is uh, this is my buddy Chris Etheridge. He's a uh, professional film director, among many other things. <laughs> um, I've worked on two feature films he's directed called Attack of the Morningside Monster and Haven's End. Um, Haven's End, I, I know, is, it, is available on VOD right now. It's, it's uh, Morningside Monster I'm not sure of. Um, it's it's off right now. It's, I need to get it back on. It's but it's uh, you can you can still buy the uh, physical media, the DVD and the Blu-ray are out nice. there and available. Uh, uh, um, Morningside yeah. Monster stars uh, Nicholas Brendan from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Haven's End stars Catherine Tabor of uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars fame. Big uh, personal favorite there. Um, yeah, yeah. Who's she's also in Morningside Monster. She is also in Morningside yeah. Monster. Very uh, very true. Uh, anyway, how you how you doing today, Chris? What have you been up to? Uh, I'm doing great. Been a been a been a busy weekend of of like fixing my deck. <laughs> but good good times. That, what uh, one day yeah, very yeah. soon you'll have a new deck and you'll be right. really excited about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um. So, but before we talk about Suicide Squad, uh, what have you anything else you've been watching lately? Uh, I mean, let's see. Recently, I I just this week I watched the 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 brand new like the Arrow 4K of True Romance. Nice. Uh, I just got that, and it's fantastic. I'm sure it is. Um, it's been a it's been a while is. since I've seen that one. It's great. It's it it had been a little bit of like probably too long since I had seen that one for me. Um, but it's it holds up so well. It's it's a great great film. Um, I saw Pig with Nicolas Cage, which is I keep calling it the inverse John Wick, which I think yeah. is a fair like it's it's it, you you go into it expecting something com some, somewhat similar mm -hmm. and it's completely different and it's a, it's it's fantastic it's a really good film probably uh, one of his best performances in years that is wonderful to hear i've always liked nicholas cage um yeah. i recently went to see uh, the green knight which is a, a right an, an interesting interesting take on uh, an old Ar arturian kind of kind of legend there and it's right completely different than i expected it's really trippy um and it's you know a a twenty four making making yeah, crazy art films do, doing their thing. That's what they do. <laughs> uh, what one For more sure. thing I forgot to mention is the 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 movie you you contributed to whose title I can't remember. Uh, yeah. So okay. So yeah. So the transformations of the transformations of the doctors Jenkins it rolls off the tongue. I don't know what your problem is. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, it's. Uh, I just don't want to get it wrong. No, no, I hear you. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, the uh, that's premiering at the Genre Blast Film Festival in Winchester, Virginia, um, in uh, Labor Day weekend, early September. I believe it's. I want to say it's September fourth. It's that Saturday. Okay. Uh, at eleven forty-five, it's basically the midnight movie, and it's nice. Uh, Twenty filmmakers. We all contributed, but I want to make sure that the appropriate blame. Uh, this film is put on uh, Stephen Stoll, uh, Michael Epstein, Kate McCoy, and Bob Rose because those are the four filmmakers who actually uh, came up with this concept and and sort of built it out and brought in a bunch of other people. And so when it goes horribly awry, everyone should know it was those four that did it. Um, I'm kidding. It's, it's 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 what it is. Is it's a um, ostensibly it's an exquisite corpse type of film where you know every filmmaker makes a scene and you you uh, you know seam them all together and watch it from beginning to end that's the that's was that ostensibly that's what it is slash was supposed to be it went horribly awry uh and and that's part of the fun uh, and so uh what you see on screen is is fantastic but it's completely not an exquisite course film it's a it's a really a really unique sort of take on on um that sort of movie, <laughs> I guess. All right, yeah. that's fair. So I, I yeah, I, so like I contributed. Unique. Yeah, it's it, no, it's 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 a it's a fun fun thing, um, very much aimed at filmmakers, um, and people who like, you know, who like film and like seeing, um, sort of like what can come out of like how different filmmakers bring, what like the tools that they bring to uh, to the table 
in a very like sort of like it's a, it's a very like shines a light on how each filmmaker is is uh different in in a lot of ways um and i contributed a three minute segment to that film fantastic uh um so yeah. the Moving on, the the reason why we're here is we want to talk about James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it has had uh, thus far a respectable, if not remarkable, opening weekend. We're uh, recording this on Sunday, Sunday the eighth. It's been out in been out in Europe for a week, and now it's uh it's came out here on in theaters and on HBO Max this past Friday. Um, it's the highest Thursday night for any rated R movie in the pandemic, which is cool. Um, so I, uh, you know, right. how were the starting kind of generally, what'd you think of the movie? Uh, I mean, it's, it was fantastic. Like it was just, it's, a, it's, it's, a, awesome. it's, it is a, it is a thrill ride. And I should probably go on record as saying guardians of the galaxy is probably my number one Marvel film of like, it probably has stayed at the top, okay. maybe one or two. Um, I like the first one a, a bit better than the second one. I do like the second one, but I, I know a lot of people like the second one more than the first one. And, and I, 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 actually I would the say one. they they are different. I think the first one is more fun and is more has more broad appeal. I would say the second one has a lot more going under the hood and is probably the better film of the two. That, that's, but that's it's, fair. I also think it's a little too long, and I think that that harms it a little bit. So. Um, what, so this movie does not have that problem. This movie is, no. is lean, and uh, it, it, it's 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 really him working on all like you know on all cylinders, and also bringing some of his like pre-Marvel you know Slither and the Trauma and, Days, and like super. some of that and Super Right, right, all that back into a big budget film, and that's you can just tell you can tell that he's like. He's free to be James Gunn. And yes, it just it's like works. James Gunn it to the max. Works. Have have yeah. as much fun as you want. Here's 180 million dollars. Right. Make make whatever movie that you want to make is. Yeah. And and yeah. we got the Suicide Squad. And you are absolutely right. This movie is bonkers, um, in pretty much the best way that that can that that you could mean that it's. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's ultra violent and it's funny and it's got a ton of heart, just like we've, you know, we've been able to expect from his other recent movies, but completely unchained. It's, you know, that's yeah. for, to, to 10 minutes in. It's probably the most violent movie that I've seen all year. So that's it, it is very violent. But I, I got to be honest, like it's really it's really like heavily cartoon violence. No, you yeah, it's I mean? it's like, comic, like it's, it's comic book violence. It's not like, I, and I have seen some people like talk about how they thought it was too violent, and I, and and I I get that, I get that it is very violent, but it's, I mean, a shark man tearing a person in half. Well, are we in spoiler zone yet? I don't know. Uh, sure, that's in yeah. the trailer though. We're good. We, yeah, that's true. That is in the trailer. Yeah, um, it's there. They added some half. more like, some more gore effect in the real one, right. but yeah, the moments in the right, trailer. Right. That's, that's, that's not like, like, I just, I just, if that, like, that's not the same thing to me as like, like an actual serious movie, like, you know, dealing with violence on a, on a very like realistic level, you know, so you got to kind of take that as with a grain of salt as it is very violent, but it's, but it's, it's the most ridiculous over the top violence in, you know, and, and, and it's, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it is what it is, but it is it is absolutely ridiculous, and you're absolutely right. the 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 first ten minutes or whatever that opening that opening sequence is is a uh, he puts totally, his flag in the totally sand, enough. which is yep. just saying, all yep. right, this is the kind of movie you're going to watch for the next two hours, right? Uh, and I guess <laughs> that you know, no pun intended, because it actually takes place on a beach, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So the the I guess the um the sum I want to mention is the size of the cast of this movie should have been uh and there's a yeah. lot of talent in that cast too you know it's not sure. it's not 15 yeah, yeah. No, nobodies no. that are on the poster right. you know what i mean um right, right uh, you right, know there's right. a, is obviously we've got idris elba margot robbie um uh you know J uh, jai courtney from the last movie um and joel kinnaman you know they're probably the most recognizable g general appeal na like you know just names it, in there but also you know like peter it, capaldi's in there um i'm sorry go ahead is it bad that my favorite moment in the entire film is when Jai Courtney got killed? Maybe is that bad? I feel I feel maybe like I shouldn't feel that way, but I was I was screaming for joy. So that's I mean I, I didn't say he was talented, but um, <laughs> fair enough. That's that's fair. No, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. Nathan, no, no. Nathan Fillion, you know. Um, yeah, right. So it's yeah? 
you know, that should be a clue early on that... All right, and also in big letters on the poster is they're dying to save the world. And that is, right. you know, that's they're, they're, they're poking fun at the fact that it's, most of this huge cast isn't going to make it to the credits. Yeah, I mean, you, you came into a movie called The Suicide Squad. You better, like, you're going to get what you came in for. <laughs> you uh, know, and, you like, know, and the only, um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time hating on that, on the last movie from 2016. But, like, right. the only, the only main character in that, or the only character in that who dies is the one useless guy who's like, all right, there's no way she's just going to kill us. And he takes away on a zip line and his head explodes, like, mostly off right. camera because it's PG-13. So it's. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's. Yeah, it's. I mean, obviously, you could talk a lot about the thing that went wrong with that film. Arguably, arguably, David Ayer says we haven't seen the real movie that he made, and that's probably fair. You know. Yeah, it's probably true. Yeah. And I, you know, I do. It's cool that he is. He's been like vocal on Twitter in full support of the James Gunn movie. Right. And that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. And I don't want to. I don't want to hate on, on that too much. That's not why we're here. Um. Yeah. 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 No. This, this. This. Yeah. Let's talk about how great this movie is. Cause yes. This, this is a great. This is a great, great film. Um, I mean, just just so much fun. Like, fun. Like, I laughed. There are two moments in the first hour where I, I'm pretty sure I laughed for 15 seconds nonstop each time. Um, and so the one was one was when Weasel couldn't swim. Like, that's just, that, that scene was, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. Because as you realize what's happening, it just, it, it keeps going. Did no You're one like, ask if the Weasel could not, swim? They're not going to do that, though they did. They did that. Okay, great. And then the second time um, was was when they take over the when they just completely blow through the the camp the rebel right. camp and then find out it's a rebel camp and then just, <sighs> that wide shot where he holds on all four of them for like this, 10 we or didn't we, we, we didn't see anybody just, we just no I don't think I just was there anybody yeah exactly it was great like that 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 is the kind of stuff that you know those jokes are they're built up to like that is not a that is not a, I mean, that's a, that's an expensive scene for what amounts to a joke, right? It's true. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, but, it, but it's, it's the kind of thing that James Gunn is like, yeah, I'm going to have this awesome action scene. And then <laughs> I'm really going to All right. It's, it's <laughs> obvious we, uh, before we continue, cause I want to talk about that a little bit more, but um, it's obvious that we liked the movie. Um, right. The, the, the cast is fantastic. I, there are a couple of standout characters that really surprised me. Uh, the, the rat catcher and polka dot mm -hmm. man. Both mm -hmm. have some wonderful moments in the movie. Uh, I've right. gone ahead and thrown the spoiler graphic. We're gonna, you know, we're talk about anything, however we want at this point. So viewers be aware. But it's no, yeah, it's uh, everybody. Uh, nobody likes to show off unless what you're showing off is dope as fuck. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah so the, uh, and they, it's five or six minutes, and they're just they're. First of all, they're they're making fun of. You know, they're both skilled assassins and they're poking around on each other and insulting each other. And then, oh, by the way, you just murdered all the rebels. It's pretty fantastic. Right, right, right. right. Oh, yeah, because it's a, it's a competition, right? Yeah. Like, while they get there. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, exactly. It's everything about that is, is a, just a, I mean, it's just, it's just messed up and it's, and it's the kind of thing that you expect. It's just, just joyfully yeah. demented, which is, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, hmm. Where, where do I want to go from here? How did we feel about Harley kind of doing her own thing for the first half or so? Because I, you know, I, I really liked it. But if there's any if there's any moment in the movie where I felt like there may be some uh, like uh, just a hiccup in the pacing, it's that. But then I watched it. I watched it again uh, today. I've seen I've watched the movie twice on HBO already. Right. And it's like, no, this is wonderful. And I wouldn't cut a second of it. So like, um, and it's it yeah, just I gives. I didn't feel that at all. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel any sort of pacing issues at all. Um, I think it's, I think it's, so I think that the, the reality of that, like if we want to step outside for a second and talk about how the sausage is made, right? Right. Like, yeah, please. Like the reality is schedules are very difficult to get that many, that many working A-list actors in one place at one time for long periods of time. It's true. So, so I am a hundred percent sure that at least part of that was working around a scheduling problem. Um, and, and, and the way you do that is, yeah, you go here. This is a, this is an actor who's going to be over off on their own for a while. And that's okay. Um, the second thing is I think that like the, the, uh, the way that they brought it back, even though they blew that in the trailer. Um, and I, and I can't decide whether I'm how pissed I am about that. Cause it was, it, it was great in the trailer. It was better in the movie, right. but the way that they bring them back together is so great. And again, 
again, this wonderful sort of like let's up in these expectations you have for this. Absolutely. Kind of film. Uh, and it's to uh, talking about know. Harley Quinn specifically, you know, she's um, the first of all, there's a moment in there where she's definitely shown some growth. You know, she gives a whole speech about uh, dudes who throw up red flags. Uh, and, I, you know, right, she right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, have this has this wild uh, to wild love affair with the, the South American dictator. Um, and then he's talking about, you know, I'm going to rule the world and I don't care how many people or children have like have to die if they're in my way or whatever. Uh, yeah. And then Harley, uh, he turns around. And Harley Quinn just shoots him, um, yeah. which uh, and it's like, you know, pretty sure murdering children's kind of a red flag. You know, just there's. Yeah. Even and also, it's not just growth in this movie. It's, it's in theory, it's the same Harley Quinn that we've seen from in yeah. in, in, in the Suicide Squad and in uh, Birds of Prey. And you know, and she's she's changing not only here, but she's changing over the course. She, she's probably the only character yeah, in really, the. You really see this as an extent, like this is her character after Birds of Prey. Exactly, like it's, she's the only choices. character this is, this in this universe great. who has an ongoing yeah. arc. Um, right, exactly. Right, exactly. And I, but what's really neat about that scene too is it also really kind of kicks the real villain into play, right? Like in addition absolutely. to being a great character moment for Harley, it's a great plot moment because now the general guy, you know, he, he doesn't have this in dictator charge, right? in his way that's probably right. told him no way too much for his liking. Right, exactly, exactly. So like that's just uh, this is good writing, man. Like that's yes. just, that's just. Um, you, and then when you, when you the, can have a character moment and a plot moment in the same thing, that's that's always nice. Uh, and then it, Harley kind of kind of plays dead for a minute until she gets some people alone, and then she she goes into superhero mode and strangles the guy, and then just uh, murders everyone in the building with little issue. Uh, and there's the the moment in the trailer, you know, where she's she's screaming, we can't see what she's looking at, and the flowers come out behind her, and I'm like, right, right. I, I've been wondering what was happening there, and it's really just that's how Harley, Harley sees did. things. She's just Harley having did. a good time. Yeah. She's yeah, just yeah, crazy, exactly. you know. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, one other. Uh, before we move on, one m other moment that you already mentioned. They get outside, and the the moment from the trailer is like, "You were gonna come save me," like, and she's almost got, almost got tears in her eyes. You know what I mean? Like, just her right. yeah, her yeah, whole yeah. her whole like demeanor someone... changes, and it's like, yeah. Um, I get Harley Quinn from the comics, and to a degree in the first Suicide Squad movie, like. She's used to being left behind and having to do things right. herself, you know. It's just, right. and it's they the the rest of the crew went out of their way to come back for her, and she you right. know she's not used to that, and it's it, you know she yeah. gets choked up for a moment. And it's wonderful, right? And she's like, "I'll go back up." Yeah, <laughs> you know, like she wants them to do it. Like it's it's so great. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's really. I think it's a really good point you make about how she is really in the DCEU, you know. Um, for like our DC cinematic universe, I guess. DCFU. Like she is, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, she is, she is the, she is the like kind of binding character in a lot of these things, even though she's not in, you know, the, the justice league set of movies, right. as far as the, as far as all the like surrounding sort of films, she's really one of the big, the big sort of binding characters. Um, and you, you can't not love Margot Robbie cause she's, she's fantastic. Right. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, what's some other other characters that uh, that you you think really shine in this movie? I was blown away by the Rat Catcher. Um, they what wonderful discovery! At, at Daniela Melchior's her name. Um, she's a, a Portuguese actress, um, right? And she's like the heart of this whole movie. Her and Polka Dot Man, um, and they're you know David Dasmalchen's fantastic, but he usually plays kind of smaller parts around the periphery, and he really gets a chance to shine here. Sure. Yeah. 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 No, I Ratcatcher two. Uh, Ratcatcher two, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. Is uh, I I really I think the thing that made it like made me like made like she's great and the whole the arc is great and her and her father and and all of that is you know very well done. But the thing that really made it work for me was when, oh yeah, the rats are actually going to be a part of the big third act, right? Yeah, like that's the like the, that's when the I'm rats like, oh, take down every Starro. Right, exactly. Like I'm like that's that's exactly why something like this is is a it's not just a fun ride. Like it's a good film because it's actually crafted where these things aren't just they're not just like side stories to give right. a backstory. It's actually part of the whole narrative thrust as well. And and yeah, and I'm like that's just like that's just great. Like that's that's the kind of thing you want to see in every one of these giant CGI fests is at least something that makes them make sense when they get to the end. You know. Absolutely, and I uh, unfortunately I feel like some of the other movies in this universe failed to deliver that. Perhaps a little. <laughs> Perhaps a little. <laughs> um, 
And then, the, of course, shout out to Taika Waititi, who plays a who plays her father in a couple of key scenes, um, I- I- ignoring, of course, the fact that they both have very thick but very different accents. Um, they're they're right. t- both talented people from different parts of the world. But um, there's a uh, the, mo- the how did you feel about Polka Dot Man and the mom jokes? Because they're, um, they're, something yeah, that they right? kept coming back around on, and I found myself laughing every time. I mean, they're very funny. They are like it's 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 unfortunate, but it's also like you know, like <laughs> unfortunate for the character, right? But it's definitely like you're. It's at least sort of like when you have these characters that are all kind of like you know messed up and and uh, you know it's it's at least nice. I think that what Gunn does is he tries and gives you. You know, with the Harley vision, with this sort of thing, he tries and gives you a glimpse into what they're going through. You know, and, absolutely. And in this, in this way, it's a visual, it's a visual um, sort of like thing about his, you know, it's I mean, basically trauma, right? Like at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, it's 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 100 trauma, and it's a and it's played for a gag, which fair enough. I mean, it um, is a, it's basically a comedy. Like there's no right. Like I get that it's a big action movie, but it's a comedy, and so it is played for a gag. But 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 it's you know it is kind of heartbreaking right like yeah it's like, pointing out this this poor yeah. poor kid was tortured by his mother like you know right. it wasn't he wasn't locked in jail and some some faceless guy did terrible things to him it was his mother right you know so exactly. it's it's kind of tragic in that way you know it is it is um b- but he picks the most ridiculous moments <laughs> it's true <laughs> to, the... to, uh, to yeah to demonstrate um where where do we want to go from here? The, it, I guess the probably the least obscure, other than Harley, who's like a, a front and center, DC Comics character. Like the least obscure people here are probably Rick Flag and Flag. Cap and Captain Boomerang, um, sure. King Shark to a degree, um, but you know, you know it's it's both Captain Boomerang and Rick Flag. They don't make it to the end. And I gotta say, like, I I I, I had a similar. Sure moment when when the, the helicopter lands on Jai Courtney uh but you know I was really surprised when Peacemaker uh stabs Rick Flash like okay how's this gonna turn out and it's he's a you know he's a useless character he was really unlikable in the first movie but in this like you know I was yeah, upset he's great it's yeah, you know I, how, how do you make how, how do you make me care about this guy you know I'm I'm a big Joel Kinnaman fan me general. too I love Joel Kinnaman like, like for all mankind the killing like everything that guy touches is he's he brings like just a uh, you know and he's relatively famous i guess but he's not like oh yeah as famous as he probably should be um he's on tv um yeah he's he's been in house of cards he's been in or he was in the first season of altered carbon um the killing you mentioned which is fantastic um yep um, yeah, no, he's he's done a whole lot of that stuff. He, I mean, I mean, he was in the RoboCop reboot. Maybe the less said about that, the better. But he was fine in it. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, you know? he, he, he did a fine job. Uh, he, he he was fine. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, yeah, no, I I, I was really just uh, I was really like bummed a little uh, b- just because like if they make another one, you, you know, and then I and then I went and read some of the comic backstory and and you know apparently he may not be dead you, you know, i mean maybe but, you know they they, like, they made it pretty clear that 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 shard of they, tyler whatever went through did. his heart yeah they did like that was pretty like like that was super intense and i wonder if that was maybe to make it clear that he is right. actually dead um but you know the reality is uh that that doesn't even matter <laughs> you know it's, it's i mean comic it's comic movie. books it doesn't matter yeah uh, i mean and this um, is a very you know the 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 dark knight this is not this is a very comic book comic book movie um, yeah 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 oh for sure um you know and peacemaker's got his series coming up and you know and maybe that'll maybe that'll touch on that a bit i think and who knows who knows but but yeah i, I was a little bummed on that one um for sure and i uh, I, and- I do want to point out in that moment the uh there's a shot where they're they're fighting off camera and you see the reflection of it in Peacemaker's helmet and like I wanted that to keep going like spit yeah. to, oh, to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. a 360 actually, yeah 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 sure no that was that was great like that was uh they did a couple of cool shots like that where you see you know where like you can see stuff uh he's got again and what's really what fascinates me about James Gunn as a filmmaker is 
he 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 draws his storyboards in, in stick figures, right? And and he's and he's talked about it before, um, and shown like examples of like he showed his stick figure like storyboards of the opening of Guardians Two with the dance sequence, right, with the fight going on and little and Baby Groot in the you know, and and I'm just like, how did how do you, how how do you how go from this, this to that? <laughs> how does that work? But he seems to pull it off great, so. You know, um, he's clearly got a a visual talent, but not a drawing talent. <laughs> so, Did you know. uh, there was a moment, and I I think I saw you comment on it um, several several months ago. Someone asked him on Instagram or on Twitter or something like, "How you you have a character that has a helmet that's made of chrome? How do you, what, mm. how do you not pick up the cameras?" And he's you know, and the way they have to go around that is they take three hundred and sixty degree plates of every set. Um, yep. So there's uh, apparently quite a few times in the movie there's CGI in the helmet to yeah, to erase the helmet, to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and it's and that it, just yeah, sounds like expensive. an enormous headache that I wouldn't want to deal with. Right, and yet y if you're gonna do that, you got to do it right. Otherwise, absolutely. Or 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 you do the the rent version where you you got cameras with people in the helmet every now and then, you know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure if we go back and look at our the last two films we worked on, there's probably some some camera in a glass in the glass window or something. Oh, somewhere, yeah. Right? You know, I'm not I'm not confident that I'm not in Morningside Monster somewhere. Right, uh, right, exactly. Right. It's a it's a thing. So. Um, but, yeah, like uh, that's that's uh, that's big budget filmmaking. Like the fact that you can even do that now is its own sort of like minor miracle, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how did you feel? I well, before we move there, uh, I want to talk about uh, Peter Capaldi, who is uh, just yeah. as just as grumpy uh, and and lovable as ever. Um, yeah. You know, there's especially like one joke there. You know, he's he's a bit uh, sassing him, and then Rackhatcher turns around like, "Do you want a do you want a dozen angry rats up your ass?" And he's like, "My answer might surprise you." And it's yeah, like that right. got like that's pro that might be the loudest I laughed through the whole movie right there. That's fair. That was a good that was a good joke for sure. Yeah. No, Capaldi is awesome. I, it's really interesting because because the Flash did a thinker, like a season long thinker storyline on the TV. Yeah, show. I've watched like, like the first two season and a half of the Flash. Okay, so yeah, it was like season six. So yeah, yeah, I did, did definitely get that. It far. was a while back, or maybe five. I don't know. It was either five or six. Right? I, I watched um, uh, more Arrow than anything else. Um, right on. Uh, yeah, the uh, so so the and the, his thinker is very different than the, oh yeah, than the than the Flash. I think thinker. it's uh, um, this thinker's even a new character. It's a like oh, it's, it's a right, yeah yeah the the Gaius Greaves character doesn't exist in the comics. Right, right. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, but no, but he's but he's great. Like he he's just always like yeah, like that's what he does. He does very variations of the angry guy or the you know like and then the doctor brought some some levity, but also like you know like or like some joy, but also the languor was still there. You know, oh, yeah. like he's just what what Capaldi does is he's very good at what he does. You know? Yeah, he was um, he was, he's of course did several seasons as Doctor Who. Um, yeah, but I, I I'm curious how uh you know he, he's got that bald cap thing on. You know, as there's got to be a, like that lights up. There's got to be a power source in there. You know, that's probably a very heavy, very sweaty headpiece. I mean, it's probably yeah, it's probably just a like like he might have had to shave. Like he might right. have had to shave his head for the role. And then, um, and what happens if the battery dies like, in the like middle a, of the day? Like, do you do you just CGI well, the, the lights? Probably, I would assume it's run down the back of his yeah. outfit, right? And the battery, like he like he like it's some sort of mesh thing, right? right? That the underneath the underneath the ball cap that's got the little thing sticking out. But yeah. That's a, or it's possible the little things have their own individual batteries. I guess that is a way that they could have gone with that, right? Like, um, I'd consider that. Probably, that makes a lot of sense. There's probably some video out there. They probably got it behind the scenes, or they'll release it soon. Right. You know on how they how they did that. Um, I always like with stuff like that. It always is cool. We're gonna go look and see if they've explained how they. Absolutely. How they, and uh, J James Gunn like actually he said on Instagram the other day that he's uh, he's already recorded a a commentary track for this. So that's going to be a, uh, you know, as soon as well, it drops on VOD, I'm checking that out. Yeah, I mean, the reality is now, like, this will be on disc in three months. Yeah. Right? Like, like it, or two, maybe even two and a half or something. Like, it will not be a long time before it shows up on disc because they just, that's a big sort of, like, well, you, you saw it. Like, they made, it made what? It made 26, 26 yeah. 27 million this weekend, which is not great. It's not, 
you know, I mean, it's it's kind of it's it's respectable. It didn't of, it didn't do like a Quiet Place numbers, but it's right. And so, I mean, what is so Quiet Place? Well, also, but a Quiet Place did the thing where they didn't go to streaming. That's true. Yeah, weeks. yeah. Like I didn't I did not go see the Quiet Place in the theater. I saw it on Paramount Plus. Well, I had I had planned to go see it in the theater, and then it appeared on a Paramount Plus that week so i i oh, watched right it on. with yeah, so you, i watched it on my big tv in the dark with headphones yeah it's probably yeah, the yeah, closest the is, best experience i could get at home at least great. yeah sure yeah um but so i mean black widow did pretty good right didn't they do like 70 or 80 or something I it, it did it did well its first weekend and then it kind of fell and off it but it's Which, of it's course, still it's gonna... uh, but it's still it's holding steady at a much lower level like it's still making gotcha. money yeah, but now I mean, but the like the whole Delta variant thing is causing things to drop again, which yeah. is you know I mean it's that's it's it's re- like I mean I don't get me wrong I wouldn't want to be a studio executive right now or ever but uh, right now particularly right like because um, it's yeah like they have hard decisions to make about these giant investments and you know I mean HBO has clearly thrown their their uh, like you know hat into the ring of just all this money goes to making HBO Max a success. You know, like that's that's clearly where they're headed. And it's so, un, they're not releasing subscriber numbers, which leads me to believe it might not be as they might not be getting the numbers they were hoping for. Yeah, you know what's really interesting is I, I'm really curious to see what happens with Dune. And me too. The, that's the, if the there's anyone why, that's going to go exclusive to theaters, it's going to be that one. Well, right, and that's the thing is Legendary wants that to go exclusive to theaters, and so they were arguing and fighting with them and I think maybe even some legal wrangling, and I, there might have been a scenario where they were, were going to end up doing that, and now it's like, well, okay, but do you, go, do you go straight to theaters if theater numbers are back to 20 million or opening instead of 50 or 60, you know, like what... Is that I, d- I don't do know that? what the budget is, but like if it comes out in 2021, oh, they're, they're not, they're, they're not going to break even. That, that there's yeah exactly like i don't understand like i mean that budget cannot be like you can just look at those trailers and go that's oh, yeah. an expensive movie you know like that's yeah i don't know what the uh yeah i don't know but it's not cheap yeah. um, and it's, that's and what i'm really looking forward to too uh, Bla- uh blade runner 2049 was my favorite movie of 2017 you know Hold i yeah. i i i love it it's it's um it's definitely uh it's 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 very heady uh, perhaps to its detriment, because it, it, you know, it would have been liked by more people if it didn't kind of linger so much, but or if it didn't overthink itself. But it's, you know, that was it, it's easily my favorite movie from that year. Villeneuve is he's just, I mean, he's just a good filmmaker. Like, there's no, there's just no, no question. He is, he is, uh, you know, if you put like, I mean, didn't he do like Arrival and Sicario back to back? Like, I don't, I don't know if they were back. I, he did both of those. Um, and yeah, uh, I, Arrival I, I, blew me away. Um, and S- Sicario, I didn't, I didn't watch until after I had seen Arrival, um, and it's, I mean, Sicario is amazing also, but I, you know, I watched that at home. Um, Sicario, so, so Sicario, here we go. Here's an example of a movie with real violence, right? Yeah. Like, like a movie that is very, you know, that, it, that, that like grounded violence and that, and, and you feel that in a different way. Like I didn't walk out of. Like I didn't walk out of Sicario feeling good, you know what I mean? Oh no, like, yeah. That's that's a movie that takes it seriously, and you're supposed to feel it, and you're supposed to understand why it's bad. Whereas this movie, so Suicide Squad, back to you know, like yeah, the, is, is, you're you're not supposed to take that too seriously, um, you, you know. And I, I think those are those are good counterpoints, right? In terms of the type absolutely. of violence, it is. Yeah. We um, uh, the. Moments into the movie, we see Pete Davidson trying to to try to turn the turn the team over, and then just like his face yeah. erupts. Like, yeah, it's not, okay, and you know, yeah. and from as and this is obviously after the moment where we see the weasel drown, but you know, that's like that from <laughs> from that moment on, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the so uh, <laughs> let's. We should, we should, I, I guess the weasel does survive. We should probably mention that the weasel. Yeah, yeah. He, he the it shows you after the um the credits title card or whatever that he uh and he wakes up and runs into the woods. And Sean Gunn, by the way, of course, they, uh, James Gunn's brother, Sean Gunn, who Sean Gunn uh it played a pivotal like a just a fantastic supporting character on uh, Gil- uh Gilmore, Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls, yeah, yeah. Years. He plays Kurt. Um, he, yeah, and and he is he is a genius. And he and you see him in um, you know Guardians as well, but uh, 
and he has two roles in this film. He yeah, he's the weasel, weasel and he's Calendar Man, which surprised yeah, me. I'd... Calendar Man, right? Um, right. I was trying to remember the name of that character. I was like, I was like, who is it? Yeah, Calendar Man. Um, but uh, if you see him, the thing that blows my mind is if you see the seat like the pre CGI footage of Weasel. I haven't like, seen it. It's it's so great because he's doing the thing with like the arms and his <laughs> arms are just like, and it's just amazing. And I'm like, that guy is just like I, I Sean Gunn should be like a he should be like a huge actor. Like everyone should. Like he should be like headlining his own franchises. I mean, that's um, that's a it's a a skill that very few actors can pull off to that degree. Like look look at look at Andy Serkis. Like there's a reason that most of his movies right. he's a a performance captured CGI character, and it's because he can right. he can do it literally better than anybody in the business. But right. you know I he's it, he doesn't get to show him... his face all that much. <laughs> Otherwise, right. but I, I think it's interesting that they gave him the director's chair on Venom too because. Like he's one of the few people that's gonna understand how that tech that technology works on a very like, like know, on a very granular level. Like, right, exactly. And 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 uh, you know, I don't know anything about it because as a director, obviously, but but I know that he understands the, the technology and maybe uh, maybe he'll bring something interesting to it because of I, you know. I hope so, but those trailers are rough. Well, I just don't like the Venom. I, I think the whole Venom universe is screwed up. Like, I, I think it, like the first one, I didn't like it very much. I, the second I one, agree. I That's. I, I, I think that there's some funny things about it, but I think that overall, it's it's that they they have just positioned that wrong, and it's going to continue to be wrong. So. Yeah. I you. Yes. I, I I want you to be wrong, but you're you're. That's probably not the case. Right. Um, I, yeah, me too. I would like to be wrong as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, let's uh, get bouncing back to to the Suicide Squad. Um, sure. We're and I I don't mind if we go on another tangent. That is what it is. But um, the, how did you feel about Starro? Uh, and I ask because you know I mean first of all it's revealed in the trailer that it, it was in the movie. Um, uh, and then yeah. you know when, when it happens, like all right, they're doing this, and I'm in for it. And that was yeah, the moment. I mean, there's a kaiju up in this shit. Man. Yeah, like, like but st like, st uh, Starro was the moment where my where my they it kind of lost my wife who was really enjoying the movie so much. Like all right, so there's a giant hot pink starfish, you know. So that you know, and that didn't. Uh, I think yeah. You know, so I, I'm concerned that uh, Starro is going to be the thing that works for the least. Part, for the smallest that's, part of the audience and not to say that's, that that's necessarily a problem like obviously the reviews are stellar you know it's like 94 percent or something on rotten tomatoes i'm just you know i'm curious about um that yeah, how, how that. you feel about I, maybe I that, that comparison because like it is because there's an element there's an element of silliness yeah to starro that can take people that aren't super into silliness out of the the film i i absolutely get that I'm into that kind of silliness, like that kind of. Nonsense I am too, is, and like, and I would argue that that you know, you know, <laughs> big chunks of this movie already were kind of edging toward we're, that anyway. We're, so we're yeah. in that, yeah, exactly. Like it does, it's not out of place. Like let's let's start there. It's not like it's not like it doesn't work completely fine in the context of this film. Um, yeah, no, I get that. Like I, I don't know. Like it, it's it's a it's a comic book movie. Like it it just is, and and stuff like that happens in comic books all the time. Hey, look, there's a giant thing coming over the top of that building it's, and it's gonna like eat us all right yep. like that's that's it is what it is uh there's a there's a shark man in this there, film. There, yes the there's a shark and he you know the, the and says certain you know the like, the, the first thing he does in the movie is try to eat one of the other team members you know right, so it's exactly it's exactly. uh i mean and it also he's i can't believe like it's and even watching it, I couldn't believe it going in. And I've seen the movie twice, and every time King Shark talks, literally every time, I have to chuckle because it's Sylvester Stallone. And I can't it believe is. that they got him to do it, but also it's perfect. You know what I mean? It's so good. It's yeah, so. Like, like, it's just right. So, yeah. Like it is an extra. Like it's an, actually a really extraordinary performance. You know, because he, he whole... gets quite a lot off with very few words. You know, King King right. Shark in this movie is like kind of dumb, so it's <laughs> right, or or at least unable to express. Right, well, he's, no, he's kind of like hand, hand, <laughs> yeah, like you can't really burn. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and um, he's you know he comes from a, a from a world of shark people, so English is probably certainly not his first language. But you know, this is like. He just he doesn't have any friends and it's kind of sad and he's kind of dumb uh, and then he makes a lot of friends um, and, and, and you know at the end everybody loves King Shark which is awesome because yeah, I love know, King Shark 
you know, it's funny to, to wrap this to another DC project that's, that's re related to some degree. Sure. Um, like, he, he, he reminds me, his voice reminds me a little bit of Bane from the Harley Quinn animated series, which you, you told me to watch. I did. It's fantastic. It's so good. And I grabbed Harper like a few weeks ago. I, I was, I ran, you know, Harper and I like we're at, we're at our, the local comic book shop that his, his friend and my friend owns. Right. Um, and, uh, and I was like, have you seen Harley Quinn? And he's like, no. And I'm like, go home and just it's, watch all of it's Harley so Quinn good. right now. It's so good. But, 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 you know, like the, it's very, like it, it's a more, <laughs> it's a more whiny version of right. King Shark. But I was like, like I was sitting there going, ah, oh, there's a little bit of Bane in there. That's true. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's, and that, that version of Bane is obviously like trying to make fun of the Tom Hardy yeah. Bane, but sure. you know, yeah, it's, it's, um, there that that I do get the the similarity there, and there's also you know there's a great King Shark in that series too, vo voiced right. by Ron yeah. Funches, and <laughs> right, right, it's yes. just like yeah, just yes. this big doofy guy, just like in this movie. Yeah. Right, yeah, but 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 yeah, but more much more articulate. Though. Oh, absolutely, yeah, right. for sure. But yeah, but but yes, that's true. That's a good point. Like, but that's not great. Like, I love how like the the different the different versions. Like, you can kind of explore those characters in different ways. Absolutely, with all these. Um, all these different like media and that like, is you know something about a number that i love about comic book characters um and in general i would say there are some that that should kind of stick to their guns but like um this characters like spider-man or batman or you know some of these super villains you know they thrive on reinvention they're right. you know you can the at at its you know at its core there are probably a couple of couple of small things that are always the same but you can you can tell a very different story using a, using a character that came from the same play. You know, you could uh, how many how many different versions of Batman have we seen? And we just talked about right. three different versions of King Shark, who's like a, a fairly you know it's probably a, like a C tier character. There there are more obscure characters, but there he's also you know he's not he's nowhere near Lex Luthor or even Harley Quinn. So it's can, can I tell you a funny story? I've I've never seen the Andrew. Garfield Spider-Man movies, either of them. Uh, and, there and are because there are things I like about them, but they are not good, and you're not missing very yeah, yeah, much. Yeah, no, I know. I, I yeah, it's clear they're not good. That's the, I'll watch them one day probably. But when the first one came out, I was so pissed off about like Tobey Maguire not continuing because I loved I loved Raimi. Oh, universe. me too. Even, and it's and I've even, even watched even those all of the warts of Spider-Man three. I just um, love that universe so much. I've I've watched I, those I first was, two Tobey Maguire movies like since quarantine and no yeah they're like people hate on them but they hold up they're so they're they're they're, they're great there's yeah. yeah no there's no yeah so i i guess i'll get around to it but i was like no i don't want i don't want to see a new spider-man right now finally by the time uh, by the time uh the marvel spider-man came around you know i was like all right and and of course he kills it but you know like yeah i'll, I'll go back and watch those other two but they're it, they just neither of them seem very interesting at all from the trailers so you know Sometimes reinvention goes poorly. No, I yes, that ab absolutely. <laughs> oh, oops, I, uh, right. I I just did something silly. Um, but uh, yes, that's it. If it is, you still have to understand where the character comes from, and you have to have like, uh, it helps to have a clear vision. Like even in, especially in Amazing Spider-Man Two, there's a lot of conflicting ideas, and like you could. You could completely remove Jamie Foxx as Electro, literally every scene he's in, which would no. be it, and it wouldn't change the plot of the movie at all. You know, you would lose the coolest action scene in the whole in the whole show, but he he's completely tangential to the main story that's happening with Spider-Man and Harry Osborn. Okay. You know, he's it's 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 <laughs> terrible. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I hope they do him. Uh, the rumor is, or maybe is it confirmed is that he's in No Way I Home? I know. That he's, uh, I know he's Alfred Molina yeah. said, like came out and said, yeah, I've I filmed scenes for this. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I hope that they they do him better, uh, because you know Jamie Fox is amazing. You know what? That's and, a really good point. I need to watch. I actually need to watch those two movies just so I have a a context for this new one for for No Way Home. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Good point. Guess I'll watch him. Guess I'll. I guess I'll, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll watch them uh, soon-ish. Who knows? Sounds good. Your your camera's frozen, but I still hear you. That's yeah, good. Yeah, I, I can see that my camera's frozen as well. I don't know what happened. Uh, turn it yeah. off and back on and see what happens. And then we'll, okay. uh, we're, we're probably close to the wrap-up anyway.
Um, yeah. Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Are you going to? Uh, I'm not gonna cut this. Edit no. this out. You're not gonna cut this out. Oh, of course not. That's funny. Um, can I kill it? How do I kill it? In uh, bottom on. bottom left. Um, how? Uh, so some closing. Just uh, anything we haven't mentioned that you'd like to uh, you'd like to talk about. You know the the main thing in this that I think makes this movie so great is that it's the the these characters that are all like or the majority of which are D-list supervillains that no, mo no one's ever heard of uh and a number of them really shine in very very interesting ways and that's you know there there aren't a lot of filmmakers that can pull that off and it's wonderful yeah i think i think that's you know and and honestly you know guardians was similar to some degree right but like that's one of the things that I like about James Gunn. I, there's other filmmakers that can do this as well. Is is they they take these characters that are to some like you know I mean uh, Polka Dot Man is not the the greatest concept ever in theory, right? But they but you know he gave him some humanity, right? He just said, look, let's just treat if you treat this character seriously, regardless of how silly the overall, like the exterior structures, if you treat him as a person, as a human right. being, if you, he's, you, you respect him as a, as a character that may have had some bad things happen to him. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, just treat, yeah, just treat him as a, like, yeah, just be, this character is a real person and not just, you know, some sort of cardboard cutout. And if you do that for all of them, which I think he did pretty well, you know, like it's, it's, uh, you know, it's going to give you um, some really interesting results. And I, I wish more of, of all I the characters we've talked about um, specifically, other than the, you know, the mess of the, the, the bloody mess that all dies in the beginning, like probably the one right. that gets the least care as far as like peeling back the layers is the thinker. Um, right. You know, and that may, it's, he, you know, he, he has a couple of uh, funny, funny lines and stuff, but he's, um, you know, he's basically the villain of the movie, uh, but he's not in it all that much because it's not about him. Yeah, like um, I mean, he's kind of. I mean, the general is kind of the villain too. Like he, he's okay. more like the. That's fair. He's more like the science villain, and the general is more the, the like authoritarian villain, right? Like, there's a the thinker's more interested in what's going on in, in his research. He doesn't care that much about the external forces that are aligning. You know, but the uh, but the uh, political side of things comes from from the uh, from absolutely, uh, and you yeah. know, and there's definitely some uh, you know uh, American foreign policy context that's kind of uh, uh, hidden in there. There you are. I've been I've been yeah, talking to a gray back. screen, but you're back. No, uh, I know. I I, I can see it. It, it. The camera didn't want to come back up, but I it's I, all good. I, I clicked it off and on a few times. It finally showed back up. Yay, technology! That's uh, uh, we're all at the mercy of it, and and I, right. you know, I'm I'm trying to uh, trying to record a show, and it's uh, everyone offers a new every episode offers a new challenge. Um, Excellent. It's uh, <laughs> and most of the you know that none of that has to do with you. Um, and yeah, so I mean we've we've showered this movie with a lot of praise. You know, there's we we sure. obviously was. Is there anything uh, you that we should touch on, even if it's just briefly that that didn't work for you or that you would have done differently or i i would have to watch it again uh, I, I and i'll be real honest like i, I was not watching it critically right oh, oh and that, no that's oh, fair that. yeah yeah um yeah i was enjoying it i was just enjoying the ride i think i think on a second watch i'm you know maybe there could be some things that would be that might be obvious to me as critical you know, as something you could you could get a little more critical on but but i do think that regardless of like what i would find that um it's this is going to be regarded as one of the best if not the best dc cinematic uh, certainly films. of the yeah it's the you recent know. dc movies and you know that the only well, I've, I've talked about a couple of things that i you, you know maybe tilted my head at but it's all nitpicks for the most part yeah oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and you know there isn't it doesn't diminish what what the movie is and the movie you know it knows what it's trying to be and it pulls that off with flying colors um, I mean, if we want to nitpick the other movies, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we could be here all day. So no, like, yeah, I that's... did. Uh, I did another episode about Zack Snyder's Justice League, and we touched on some of the other movies and why none of oh, them were. And it's oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, this, did you yeah. did you sit through that four hour disaster? 
I did. I mean, not not four hours. I watched it in chunks. I no, was, me me I was too. I watched gonna... uh, uh, ha like it was kind of broken up episodically. So I watched like four of them and then the other four. Um, yeah, I I did. I I think it. I did like in an hour, an hour and a half at each in, in three three or four chunks. I I can't remember exactly how how I I did it, but it was it was a uh, you know I mean it was it was interesting. It was an interesting. Uh, experience i guess uh you and i've talked a little bit about this stuff that we think are is better from the other version worse from the other version and we don't need right. to get into that on this podcast but sure um but uh yeah overall it just it just yeah i just i don't have a lot of positive sort of like i don't have, like if you go through man of steel to batman versus superman to justice league i just don't have a lot of like there's some good things about it but i don't i don't think it is very successful as a whole uh, I mean, the only the only one of those movies that I have ever like chosen to watch twice, other than to be critical of, was Man of Steel, and it it too has a lot of problems. But um, I I don't at all. Like that's that's probably my least favorite of those three. Really? That's because yeah. That's, B BBS is like a it, fucking baffling mess, dude. Uh, anyway, um, it, it, it no, it is. I don't get me wrong. <laughs> it, I just enjoy watching it more because it's Man of Steel tries to be something that it's just not. BBS at least knows it's a mess to some degree. <laughs> that's that's so. fair. Um, anyway, we're uh, it pro it's probably coming to the end here. Thank thank you so much yeah, for yeah, uh, no for for oh, hanging out. Um, I if. Uh, if you have the time, I, I'd like to do this again if another another awesome movie comes out. But I um, sure. I, I'm glad you liked it. I, pig. I we love can to come back and talk about pig all day long, man. I I, <laughs> I will see if uh, if if I can go to the you know I've been to the movie theater twice in the last month and now pig, everything pig's on is on VOD now. I I, re I rented pig. It you is on rent VOD. Five, so five I bucks. will yeah six bucks or something yeah. Um. So then in that case, I'll definitely check it out because I I thought it was still in theaters. Um. But uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for watching. This has been another uh, Engine 25 review. Um, uh, reminder, we're also on Spotify now at a couple of other services. I'll put the Spotify link in the, uh, in the description down below. And uh, everybody, have a, have a good week. Um, and you should watch The Suicide Squad on HBO Max, even if you've already watched it in theaters or on streaming, because it's awesome. Uh, have a good night, guys. Bye-bye.